Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for today's meeting where we will be looking at the new features recently added to our Consolidator Plus multivariable controller. We'll be taking a brief look at Precision Digital's new Consolidator Plus, talking a little bit about what it is, and then really dive into those new features. But before we do so, uh, I should introduce myself. My name is Joe Ryan. I'm the VP of Sales and Marketing with Precision Digital. And the single most important thing I want you to take away from today's presentation is this. Feel free to call me after the webinar to discuss any of these great new features in more detail, how they apply to the applications and processes you're working with. There's a lot here. There are a lot of new features. And we're not going to be able to deep dive into every single one of those enough that they'll explain whether or not it can necessarily do exactly what you need it to. And so if you leave here today with any questions, I'd love for you to reach out. That having been said, there are some logistical or bookkeeping issues that I'm going to address right off the bat here today. Uh, the most common question I get is, is this webinar going to be recorded? That's followed up by, can I get a copy of the slides? And the answer to that is yes to both. We are recording the webinar. And you will get a copy of the slides, both of which are going to go out probably mid-next week. So keep your eye on your inboxes. If you're looking for those, they will go out automatically to you for registering for the webinar. The other thing I want to know, which you've probably already realized, is that we are all in listen-only mode, meaning I'm the only one who can talk here today. There are a lot of you on the call and to have this many dogs barking, kids crying, doors slamming, people sneezing, it would make this a very painful experience for everyone. However, if you'd like an opportunity to interact, ask some live questions for me to address here, I encourage you to do so. I'm just going to ask that you do it by typing into the chat box in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. If you want to submit some questions there during the webinar, I'll try my best to address them as we go. However, if we don't get to your questions, I will absolutely have someone follow up with you afterwards to make sure we get them addressed. Now that I've had a chance to talk to you a little bit, I'm going to let you talk back to me for a brief moment and help me plan out today's presentation. I'd like to know what your industry is. Are you one of our industrial distributors selling into all kinds of industries and helping them with their solutions? Or are you an end user in a specific kind of plant? This will let me know uh, what I may want to tweak on the fly to make sure we address the concerns that, that any large groups have. And I appreciate all the responses coming in for that. Uh, it looks like we have a lot of industrial distributors out there today. Um, in fact, it's looking like it's all industrial distributors and manufacturing. So I will make sure that we uh, touch on some elements for you guys and, and you public utility folks. This is going to be good for you too. In fact, I've got some example setups it might sound interesting to you because you're probably in water and wastewater if I had to guess. So I thank you for that feedback. I think you'll all get something good out of today's meeting. Let's start with what you're going to leave here with. These are, these are the things I want you to know by the time we're done here today. I want you to know all about the great new features and be able to list some of them off, know what they are. I want you to see them live, see how I'll remember them. I want to look at some real application screens that you can discuss with your customers for you out there who are industrial distributors. We've got some setups here that will show you some uh, applications we've actually worked on, and we can briefly review once we've introduced all these new features. And I want you to learn why these features matter to you. My hope is that you will see here something, to, you'll see here something today that will strike home and be of value. And you're going to call us up and want to talk about it. So if we do our jobs right here, we're going to know because you're going to have an interest in this product and want to learn more. So what is the Consolidator Plus? Well, that's a great question. I'm hoping that many of you have heard of it by now. But just to briefly review, the Consolidator Plus is a multi-channel controller for process display, alarm, and control applications. There's a lot there. So just breaking it down real quick, what does that mean? Well, it's a multi-channel controller. That may mean multiple inputs, like multiple 4 to 20s or multiple 4 meter pulses. You can do digital inputs, you take discrete signals in. Uh, it may mean uh, Modbus RTU. You could be writing to it as it's a Modbus slave device and having it just display information from your DCS. But 
We use the word channel and not input because these could be math channels. These could be discrete input channels. These could be uh, a variety of different kinds of channels, the likes of which you would normally only get on, say, a PLC, but that we have the ability to do with the Consolidator Plus. It's got a numeric bar graph format on a large 5.7 inch color display. You'll get a good sense of that when we look at it live in a few minutes. It can have multiple relays with all sorts of different user defined actions from simple alarming to pump alternation control to being set off at certain times and dates. You can get 4 to 20 milliamp outputs, all isolated, digital outputs. You can have it uh, provide you that information to your DCS because again, it is a Modbus slave. And I'm proud to say this is our first product with Ethernet Modbus TCP IP. So you have Modbus over Ethernet with this. So if you want to connect it up to your Ethernet uh, lines and access it from within your plant or anywhere in the world, you can do that via Modbus. We've got 32 timers, which allow you to control all kinds of processes and events. We'll see some good examples of what those can help you do. And probably the, the best element from a user's perspective of this free Consolidator Plus configuration software. It makes it really easy to set these up. The very first consolidators I personally helped sell, I sold three of them to a customer that had all three of them set up in under an hour with this software. I like to tell people that Consolidator Plus has all the features and functions you're used to on PLCs and HMIs, but it sets up with the ease of a panel meter. If that's appealing to you, then you need to pay attention to this product. So how familiar were you with our previous generation of Consolidator products? That could be the last release of the Consolidator Plus that came out at the beginning of the year. Or it could be our Consolidator 4 and our Consolidator 8, the previous entire product generation, which was a completely different set of hardware and features. Once again, I want to say I appreciate all the fast responses from folks. Uh, you, you all seem like you're, you're giving me some good feedback pretty quick, and that helps us move along. And it looks like many of you have heard of it. Uh, there's some of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, but many of you have crossed paths with it, are aware of it, maybe you had the opportunity to work with it once. Uh, and there are a few of you out there who actually are saying that you are experts in that previous generation product. So I think you'll like this one even more, and I'd love to hear your feedback when you get it. Now let's dive in and take a look at those new features that I keep talking about. The most noticeable and one of the best is the fact that we now have a color selection on that full color screen we've always had. You can now choose from 65 colors. You can see what that palette looks like here. You can now, when you're going into programming, choose from 65 colors that can be selected for the text, the background, and the bar graph. You can also set up alarms to set it into specific backgrounds, bar graphs, and text. You can even have it flash. So what do all those things mean? Well, if we look at this screen here, you'll see that there's different kinds of things we can color. You've got the background itself. So for example, this top one is in blue. We've set the text to white because the white looks like it goes better with the blue rather than having black and such a dark color. And we color code the bar graph so it's the same color as the background to make it very easy to make that connection between those two colors. And so I'm going to share my screen now so you can see a consolidator demo that I've got set up here on my desk. So you can see what this color actually looks like for real. Oh, sorry. All right, so this is a consolidator that's actually set up on my desk. Hello, folks. Sorry I'm not on camera myself, but you'll have to believe that I'm here. And what you see here is the most basic use of color. In this case, we've left everything pretty monochrome looking. But we've changed the color of the bar graphs to be blue for our water tanks and changed the color of the text to be blue for the same water tanks. I've set up the oil tanks to be black, and so I set up the text for the oil tanks to be black. Very subtle, very easy to set up. Now, should you want something a little more colorful, well, you can certainly do that. And this is my preferred way to look at it because I think it really makes it pop and it makes it a little more legible. Here you can see we've got an individual color for each one of the bar graphs. And you can very quickly figure out which bar graph each one of those is related to because we've color-coded the background to match that of the bar graph. 
Now I can have up to eight bar graphs on the screen, and I can set up the 65 colors. So it's very easy for me to have a 12, a 16, a 20 input version of this, and have every single one of those have its own color matching everything up with everything else. Now maybe I don't want bar graphs on here. Well, I can certainly just have big, bright, colorful screens that draw my attention where I can color code what the material is. So maybe all oil is, is blue and all water is, I'm sorry, all oil is black and water is blue. Maybe I want critical readings in red. Maybe I want gas to be in yellow, but I want fluids to be in green. It's really up to you. You can easily set it up any way you want to really make it pop for your customers or in your applications. We'll also see in a minute how you can change, actually no, let's take a look at it now. We can actually see how you can have alarms also set up for color. So let me go back to the previous screen. So I have one of our PD9502 signal generators here set up so that I can modify the value on channel one, which is my tank one water level. And you can see that it's green. And what's nice about this is that you can, I have it green, but I want it to really draw someone's attention when I hit alarms. You see I've got a high alarm set up at that bar right there, and I've got a low alarm set up at the bar down here. And when that goes into an alarm, I don't want it red and flashing to get somebody's attention. It's just a high level water alarm. In, in this application where I've got oil as well, water is always a secondary color as far as urgency. So rather than having like a red flashing alarm, I think I'm going to set it up just to be a yellow solid alarm. And so what happens when we go over that alarm level is it now changes color so that I see yellow on my background and yellow in the matching bar graph. Now you'll see other alarms later where they're red and they're flashing. They can be blue. They, you can set those up to be whatever colors you want. But it gives you an idea that you can change the colors you've set as your alarms go up. You'll also notice, and I'll just point it out now, that we'll talk a little about it later, that I have this alarm light in the lower left. What's great about that is if I'm on a different screen, so let's say I'm on a screen that doesn't even have tank one on it, I can see that alert down the bottom. It's always there. And when I press that alert button, it lets me know what alarms I've got active, and it's going to give me the option to acknowledge those alarms right from this screen. Now, in this case, it doesn't clear because it's, it's still in that high alarm state, but if I lower my level down, it will. So I hope that gives you some idea of the flexibility of the color options. Another great new feature on the Consolidator Plus is simulation mode. Simulation mode, without changing the inputs, makes the Consolidator see and behave as if that input is changing. So if I want to test out my system, but I don't actually want to provide a different 4 to 20 million input or provide a pulse input into it, I can just simulate that input. And I can do that by setting it up as one of the soft keys on the bottom of the screen. You'll see that there's five keys on the bottom of every screen. Those are programmable to be whatever you'd like those keys to be. And so sometimes in, this, in these examples we're going to look at, you'll see that they might be acknowledging relays or resetting relay timers or uh, in this case, setting up simulate mode. So let's take a look at what that simulate mode looks like. In this case, we're going to go to tank one detail. This is a screen I built that gives me all kinds of additional information on one of the tanks from a previous screen. So in the actual real world application, I've got four tanks here, and then each one of those tanks would have its own detail screen. I've got the bar graph that you saw previously. Then I've got its level in gallons. I've got its level in feet and inches. A constant on the screen just showing someone that the maximum tank height is 30 feet, giving them a little context for that tank level in feet and inches. I've got a rate of change display. So as I change my tank level, it will tell me how many gallons per second I'm changing. And I've even got a rate of change alarm so that if I go too fast, it gives me on-screen indications of color, and it can trigger relays, et cetera. And then, just for troubleshooting purposes, I've got my transmitter output level on there as well, so I can see the milliamps coming in. So 
All of this is just off one 4 to 20 milliamp input from my tank, and I'm getting all kinds of ver uh, useful information from it. But we're here to see simulate. So you'll see down at the bottom, in addition to acknowledging the relays, I've got a button set up that says sim channel 1, which is what we're looking at here. And all I have to do to use that is press simulate, and now it brings up the ability to simulate that value. And I could punch in a number, but I'm going to use the up arrow just to increase my level. And it starts off slow and starts to speed up. As it speeds up, of course, it's going to trigger my rate of change alarm. And eventually, I'm going to go into my high alarm state. So any alarms, 4 to 20 milliamp outputs, math channels that I may have set up to go off of this channel now see it at 9,000 gallons, even though I haven't actually changed my 4 to 20 milliamp signal at all. And one great feature I like about simulate mode is that, let's say I bring it down out of alarm state for a minute. So I'm, I'm happy with how it's working. Everything seems to be going along nicely. Uh, I've removed it from alarm state, and I'm done. I click OK. Well, I left it in simulate mode. So as I change my 4 to 20 milliamp input, you'll notice no bar graph is changing because I'm stuck in simulate mode. But if somebody walks away from this screen and forgets that it's in simulate mode, I have a yellow alert down here telling me something's not quite right. And if I click that button, it tells me, hey, you know what? You left tank one in simulate mode. I can go click the real button, and it's just going to return it to normal for me. That is a phenomenal feature for simulate, because obviously you don't want somebody leaving that like that. And you get that same impact with manual mode that we're going to see in a minute as well. So I think the simulate feature is really great for folks who want to be able to test out their system and really use the Consolidator Plus as the heart of their control system. Now, similar to simulate that we just saw, we also have an analog output manual control mode. So you can set up your analog outputs to have a, a button at the bottom of the screen. You press that, and you get to type in whatever you'd like for that analog output to be set to. So again, useful just for testing systems. Maybe I don't want to use simulate where it could also trigger high and low alarms, et cetera, but I want to test another part of my system. Well, I can use this to change the 4 to 20 milliamp output to be whatever I'd like. Live calibration is also now possible. This is a really convenient feature, more convenient than I think many people give it credit for. So we're going to talk about it for a moment. The best reason to use this is not, not so much because you want to recalibrate from this traceable calibrator. Right? These, these come from our own CalLab. They're very, very accurate. Um, sure, you may want to recalibrate them every year, and you can do that. But the real value here is for when you're installing a Consolidator Plus, and you don't know something about your system. So let's say, for example, I've got this small tank, and the transmitter has already been installed up there. It was installed by somebody 15 years ago. I have no idea how it's programmed. I don't know if it's programmed properly. I don't know what the 4 to 20 milliamp is. But I want to get a display on this tank using that transmitter. So how would I do that? Well, now with the live calibration feature, that's really easy. Rather than programming the channel for a specific milliamp value like you would before, where you'd say, okay, 4 milliamps is equal to 0, and 20 milliamps is, in this case, equal to 50,000, I can take a live reading. And so I can say, you know, I'm just going to lower my tank down, take a reading, raise my tank level up, take a reading, and I'm done. So what does that actually look like? Let's, let's go through one together. So I'm going to go into my setup menu, and we're going to go to tank one. And we're going to take some live readings of that. And so in that case, I don't know what the low level readings are of my transmitter. So I'm going to lower my simulator down and say, you know what, let's say when my tank is quote unquote empty, I have 5.7 milliamps coming out of it. Well, I don't know that in this example, right? All I know is I can drain my tank. I have my pumps covered by water. That's what I'm looking to do. I want to call this empty. So how do I call this empty? Well, I can uh, edit that. Oh, I'm sorry. I can hold the edit button, and I can press this live key. When I do that, you notice it's not asking me for a number. It's taking a reading of my milliamp value. And so in this case, it's 5.74, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Great. And now I can fill my tank up until my transmitter is transmitting whatever value it is when it's high, 
And when I'm happy and I want to say, you know what, I want to call this tank full. So again, I hit edit, I press live, and now it's taking some readings at full, and save that. Done. Now, I know what my readings are because it read them. I, I didn't actually know any of my 4 to 20 million values. So you can see where that might be valuable for a situation where you don't quite know how the transfer is set up. You just know this is, this is 0%, this is 100%, and I'd like to calibrate it for that. Now, one other feature I want to show you now, because it's going to reset this for me, is what we call our backup or store. Let's say someone does this in the field and you didn't want them to. You could have set a password, you forgot to, and someone went in here and they, they started live calling everything. Well, one of the great features on the Consolidator Plus is that you can overwrite that with a previously saved backup copy. Not a factory default, that's something different. But you can actually back up your programming into the Consolidator Plus and have it to restore back to. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to back out of my menus and go to System. We're going to go to General. And I'm not going to save my backup. That writes a new backup into the backup memory. I'm not going to load my defaults because I certainly don't want that. I'm going to restore myself to default. Or restore myself rather to my known good. And now when we go back into my setup menus and we look back at Tank 1, I'm right back to where I was, 4 and 20. It reprograms the entire consolidator with that known good backup. So incredibly useful feature. That's actually not new. We had that before. But I like to share it because I find it's just super valuable. We have more alarm functions available. Uh, one of the capabilities you can do with the alarms, of course, now is you can have them flash. They have their own programmable color features. We looked at that earlier. Uh, but you can also now base alarms on more things like time and date. So I could have, for example, an alarm that goes off every day at 8 o'clock. Maybe that's just to get someone's attention to load something. Maybe that's because I want to have it reset a total at that point. Uh, maybe I need someone to come over and check on my process every four hours, and so I set it up like that. But only on weekdays, well, that's fine too. So it now is a real-time clock in there that lets you set time and date alarms. And we saw that flashing alert message they can go off any time an alarm goes off. So uh, not only do I get those yellow alerts if there's something sort of questionable about the setup, but if I go into an alarm state, we can see this easy enough. But if I go into an alarm state, I now have a flashing red down there. And when I press that, it tells me, OK, we got my tank one alarm high. What's great about that alert button is you could have 20 plus inputs coming into this. And if you're on a different screen, or even in this case where I have four, if I'm on my tank one detail screen, well, geez, I, oops, I really want to know that I have an alarm going on on tank three. Well, it's going to trigger that alert. You'll notice it doesn't trigger the alert for rate of change because it's all how you set it up. I told it that I don't want that rate of change alarm to be setting off uh, alerts on other screens while I'm there. So it's very flexible. There's a lot of options. And again, you're not programming anything with code. You're just clicking on buttons in the software. You're clicking the checkbox that says, you know what, use this to show alert. For those of you who want to do Mobus over Ethernet, uh, in previous versions of the controller, you had to have a separate software package that you would run, and it would give you all of your Ethernet information. The key takeaway here, now it's all available from the consolidator screen. You can get your MAC address, your IP address, your ports, your protocol, everything you need to tell your IT department, hey, here's all this information. I need to connect to this device from my house, from a remote location, et cetera. Go make sure your firewalls and your ports and all that IT magic that you do to let me talk to it are set up appropriately. And so there's no need for third-party software to view all of this. You can do it right on the controller screen, take a picture of it, read it off, whatever you want to do. I mentioned we have a real-time clock now, which is great for setting alarms. Uh, it also displays on the menu screen, so you can see it whenever you're in there. You probably saw it earlier. Uh, but the real, the real advantage of that for me is that it lets you set alarming based off of that. Um, it does have a battery in it, so, so it will save that time. So just because you turn it off for eight hours for maintenance doesn't mean that you're going to have to reprogram that real-time clock. And we added a few math functions. So we've always had math functions like difference, absolute difference, absolute value, averages, weighted average, multiplied, divide. Those are easy ones. 
Uh, but now we've got, for example, rate of change in there. That's a very important one. Uh, that is great for applications where, say, you want to check for a leaky tank. You know, if the level is changing but it's not changing fast enough to prove that it's the pumps, hey, let's set off an alarm. Maybe you want to have an average uh, value of effluent flow. And you know what, if I go over that, then I need to let me know because, you know, I'm putting it out at too high a rate and at the end of the month I'm going to find out I put out too much. Uh, maybe you want to check your rate of change to make sure that your pumps are working properly and you want to know that you don't have seals blown, et cetera, and so you want to make sure when they're pumping, they're pumping fast enough or perhaps that they're not pumping too much. So rate of change can really be used for a lot of great diagnostics in a system and you can display that rate of change, you can alarm on that rate of change. Units conversion is something that a lot of people don't even realize it has, but I think that they take a lot of advantage of. And what do I mean by that? Well, the Consolidator Plus does a lot of this automatic unit conversion behind the scenes. So there's really two ways you, that I see people using it most often. Uh, one is just straight up automatic channel unit conversion. What that means is, for example, let's say I have a flow meter, and that flow meter is set up in gallons per second. Well, I don't want to see it in gallons per second. I happen to be in Canada, let's say, and I'd really like to see this thing in liters per minute. Well, I mentioned earlier that the channels don't quite equate to inputs. So what you could do is you could set up a channel that shows it as gallons per second. Well, that's great. I don't have to display that channel. It could just be a, a math channel that happens in the background. And then I could set up a second channel, tell it, you know what, be based on channel one, but your units are liters per minute. And if I display that channel, the consolidator is going to do all that math conversion for me and spit it out. No need for me to bust out my cell phone and start doing calculator work in it and writing things down on the back of a napkin. The other way that automatic unit conversion is very helpful is that if you try to do math on different channels of different units, it will do that math for you. So if, for example, I have two totals, right, and one happens to be in gallons and one happens to be in liters, and then I think, you know, I'd really like to see the sum of these two total flows. And so I build a channel that sums the two flows. And I say, I'd like to see that in barrels. It's going to read those gallons and those liters. It's going to convert them over into barrels for the summation. And your math channel is going to spit you out a number in barrels without you having to think about it. Now, obviously, it's only going to do that within appropriate units. It, it can't convert a volume into a temperature. But wherever it can figure out that math conversion factor between all these custom units or the ones that you, you create, it will do that. You're also going to notice, by the way, and maybe you did, that there's this logic unit down the bottom. It's got all kinds of interesting things in there, right? Pump off, pump on, stop, error, warning, running, custom. Uh, what is a logic unit, right? Well, that's just where we store information for displaying alarm indication, enunciator panel readouts. You'll, you'll see those in a minute. Those are kind of interesting. And lastly, on the uh, new features list, we've got an internal fan, which turns on whenever it reaches 50 degrees C, helps circulate air inside the unit and in the cabinet. Uh, and the fan slowly increases speed until the temperature rises to 260. And then the flip side of that, we've got an internal heater, which turns on at zero degrees, max out at minus 10. You don't have to think about any of these. They're really just being mentioned so that you'll know it's got an internal heater that helps it work down to minus 40 C for all of you northern weather customers. And then we've got the fan, which I want you to know about just so when you turn one of these on and you hear a noise, you're going to know, hey, maybe the fan's turning on because it's particularly hot. Now, uh, I'm going to pause there for a minute just to address a couple of questions. Um, Jessica has asked so far, uh, what's the hazardous area classifications for the Consolidator Plus? And my answer to that is that today it is nothing. However, uh, we are literally in the process right now of working with the engineers at, at several approvals agencies to get it Class 1 Div 2 approved. So uh, if you look back in a couple of months, I think you're going to find that there's a Class 1 Div 2 version of this product available. Tony was asking about the 4 to 20 million outputs. Can you get PID control via those outputs? And I will say the consolidator does not do PID. Uh, you can do simple on-off control with it. Uh, you can do simple scaled control with it, but it does not do PID control. And Eric has asked, uh, will it convert volume to weight if we give it the specific gravity for liquids? And the answer to that is sort of, it will not do an automatic unit conversion because it involves sort of an additional piece of information you'd have to give it. 
in order to make that conversion. However, if you wanted to do that, it'd be very easy to make a scale channel or a math channel that would do that for you. So, so it can absolutely be done. It requires a very, very minimal amount of programming. It's not just going to automatically happen if you select it. Uh, but there is definitely a way to do that if that's what you like to do. Um, and uh, Mark is asking, uh, is it NEMA 4X? And the answer to that is yes. Like all Precision Digital panel mount products, uh, the front of the Consolidator Plus is a NEMA 4X seal. So I know it's got the LCD and it's got some rubberized buttons. That is all sealed from the front. So as long as you put it in a NEMA 4X box, you're going to keep your NEMA 4 seal. And it is also sunlight readable, so it's perfect for outdoor environments where you just put it in a NEMA 4X box, you can read it in direct sunlight, and you're good to go. Uh, along those lines, actually, Tracy just asked, is it mainly panel mount, or is there an option with its own standalone housing? The Consolidator Plus itself is panel mount, but we offer a line of accessory enclosures that you can put it in. So it's not like you would order a different version of the Consolidator Plus and get an integrated box of some kind. But we have plenty of boxes available for it. We just need to find the one that is the one you're looking for. Um, we, we currently have one. I suspect by early October we're going to be launching another five. So by the time you actually go to look at it, uh, hopefully what you'll see is we've got six different boxes ranging from fully covered and enclosed plastic ones with a clear cover uh, to painted steel and, and even some that are plastic that don't have a uh, fully enclosed cover that you can just use the, you have access to the buttons on the front. So we have a variety of different enclosures for you. Uh, as far as the temperature and operating range of the unit and display, uh, asked by Al, uh, the unit is good for minus 40 to 60 C, I believe. So now, why don't we take a look at what some of these new features can do when you actually want to deploy them out in the field. Uh, we'll take a look at some of the screens that we've got set up here on the consolidator I've got to share. So we've already taken a look at my initial channel, my channel with more, or, oh, sorry, my initial screen, my screen with more color. We can see, oh, sorry to those who may hear my dog barking in the background. Uh, we can take a look and see what that same screen would look like if I were to take the bar graphs off of it, if bar graphs are something that I'm just not interested in. And then we saw what the Tank 1 detail screen looks like, where I'm just getting a whole lot more information about each one of my individual tanks. Well, obviously, this can do a whole lot more than just basic tank indication. It just happens to be one of the most popular applications. And so another one is for sump level control, especially for facilities with multiple sumps. You can bring all of them into this one location and manage all of them. And so what we've got shown here is our duplex pump controller. We've set it up so that we've got two pumps, pump one and pump two, a pump status indicator to let me know if any of those pumps are on, and we've got a feet and inches display for the sump level. So as my sump level goes up and the water rises, I'm going to get on-screen indication as it turns yellow that my sump level is high. It'll let me know that I'm draining my sump, show me that a pump is turned on and which one, and it's even going to track the run time and the cycle time for those pumps, which is great for maintenance purposes. Now, as my level drains down, it will eventually clear that alarm. The sumps turn off. The pump status returns to off. Everything's OK again. When it happens again, as we're duplex controlling pumps, it turns on pump two. Whoops, my apologies. It turns on pump two to split that load. Now, pump two is going to be tracking its run time and cycle time. And it's worth noting that you can not only cycle based on uh, the, the high level, but you can cycle based on time as well. So after a certain amount of time, you can say, okay, you know what, pump one has been running for long enough, let's turn it off, let's turn on pump two. Now if pump two can't keep up and the level keeps going up, I've got a second alarm here, which is going to turn it into a red alarm now. Hopefully that will get somebody's attention. Both pumps are on, both pumps are tracking time, and they'll both stay on in this case, until I clear my, my sump level alarms. I've also mentioned in the past those soft keys at the bottom of the screen. So you'll see I've got reset relay one and reset relay two. So when I come and I decide I want to do maintenance on, let's say, pump two here, it's been running for, for 53 days without having been changed. It's been cycled 458 times. Well, hey, I want to reset that. So I'm just going to hit this reset two key, confirm that I actually really do want to do it. 
And now, okay, great. We're going to start tracking that runtime and cycle time again because we've replaced seals. We've checked on the pump. We're good to go. You know, we're going to come check on it again in another 100 hours of work and, and, or, and or 500 cycles. And now I'll know when that is. Another great application somewhat related to some is list station control. I have a lot of the same information here. I've got my wastewater level in feet and inches, my pump status, and my pump one and two information like we just saw. They're set up for pump alternation, just like they were in the previous example with the sumps. But because we're talking about a lift station, I want to know a little bit more information. So I'm also bringing in a signal that's going to give me the PSI of my discharge. I'm going to bring in a pH probe so I know what the pH is. And I'm going to be bringing in a signal from a gas detection unit. So now I've got all the information that my lift station wants all on one screen. And if I've got multiple lift stations, well, I can just make these lift station one, lift station two, lift station three, and have a screen set up for each one of those. Along the same lines of things often used in wastewater, maybe I just want to see my effluent rate in total. Uh, this is set up like this because we had a customer who wanted to be able to see it from 30 feet away. And so we just put really basic displays on each screen. You know, I want to see really big numbers for the rate in total. And so that's what we did. Now, if this wasn't quite visible enough for them, we could start changing colors. We could make it really bright. We could turn the uh, you know, background really dark and make some brighter numbers. But uh, this was good enough for them. They saw it from a distance. They could see it outside. And so uh, that worked for them. And then here's an example of what multiple flow rate and totals may look like on the screen. To help track which totals are connected to which flows, uh, you can see that we color coded them all, much like we did with the tanks earlier in the bar graphs. And of course, I can set the units for all of these. So you know, I have one set up to liters, then a rate of liters per day. We've got gallons per second, gallons per minute, gallons per hour, whatever is appropriate for that specific flow meters readout. And then down in the lower right, we programmed it to reset totals. So I can choose to reset that total. And you know what? We're just going to reset everything. Start counting them all again. Those could be specific totals. You know, you can say, okay, you know what? I don't want to reset all of them. But that just happens to be how this one was set up. Gas detection is another popular application. Uh, this takes advantage of some of the advanced alarm features. So in this case, we're measuring methane percentage. We're giving an exposure time. And we're saying the status of a vent and a door. And so the real world application for this was the customer wanted to be able to measure the methane percentage. And then if it were to go over a certain level, track the number of minutes of exposure in the area. So what's the maximum amount of time somebody could have been exposed to this? How, how long was it over the allowed percentage? And if you went into that alarm state, they wanted to turn on their vent fans and they wanted to open the garage doors and really just try to flush the air out of there as fast as they could. They also wanted to leave these on for a time after the alarm cleared. So as my percentage goes up, I'm going to pass by my first alarm. And you'll notice now that my minutes of exposure starts ticking up again. So right now we're at 0 0.2, 0 0.3. That's going to keep going up. I've got a yellow alarm to let me know that something's wrong. My vent fan is now telling me that it's on. And my door status is letting me know that they should be open. If it keeps rising up, now I go into a red flashing alarm again to try to really get some attention here. And I can tie that into relays that will set off additional horns and lights and indication that, OK, you got a real problem here. Now, hopefully, when the vents turn on, uh, the, vents, the vent fan turns on and the doors open, that level is going to go down. And you're going to notice now, when I clear this alarm in a moment, Though I'm going to be out of alarm state, my vent fan and my door status are going to stay on. I've got a green indicator over here to let me know that things are OK, but I did recently have an alarm. And then after some certain amount of time that you set, that vent fan turns off and that door status closes again. So it's a really great gas detection application that took advantage of a lot of the advanced features here, the timers, uh, and the ability to tie all these things into the various relays. And down the bottom, I've got the ability to reset my timer, which is tracking my minutes. So once I realize, OK, everything's fine. We've got all of that incident recorded. I can hit my reset timer. And we're back down to zero minutes of exposure time. So the next exposure will be tracked appropriately. 
I mentioned those custom units earlier and those logic units. Well, one of the great things you can do with that is set up really interesting enunciator panel. So I don't have any bar graphs or any numbers even on this screen. All I'm doing is tracking different uh, alarms or different discrete inputs. And so here, everything has a label. I know I'm talking about my north sum, my bearing temperature, my release valves open, my vent fans off. And the, the quote unquote logic units let me actually put some unique uh, indicators there to, to tell me more than just is it on or off, is it red or green. So for example, I'm, I'm telling people, okay, you know, my vacuum pressure is normal. It's not vacuum pressure off. It's vacuum pressure is normal. My feeder valve is in the feed state. My vent fan is off. My circulation pump is stopped. And as I go into alarm states, either from high analog inputs or discrete inputs changing, I can set these to be different colors of alarms. I can have some flash and some not. And I can change the text to tell me, again, more information than just your basic enunciator panel is going to give you. So now, you know, we can offer warnings. We can tell people pumps are running. We can tell them the positions of the feeder valve. Much more information than you're going to get off of just like a blinking LED on an enunciator panel. As I clear those, they're going to return back down to what they originally were. And the last screen I've got to show is the five zone bar graph. And so what you see here is an example where the Consolidator Plus had replaced a whole lot of LED bar graph indicators being used for bulk storage, which is why they're all bulk storage tanks, they're all reading pounds. And everyone's got the same high alarm, high, high alarm, low alarm, and low, low alarm. And in the normal state, they're all just green, letting you know everything's okay. And it's called a five zone bar graph because as that level gets higher, that'll go and change into a yellow state, draw attention to it, and if it gets high, high, it changes to red. And what's real nice about this is as that red alarm clears, it doesn't go back to normal, it goes back to your warning state, it goes back to yellow. And that same thing happens when you decrease the level and you see the low alarm, it turns yellow, if it keeps going down, you get to red, and then it clears back to yellow, and then it clears back to green. So I hope that gives some idea of the different kinds of displays you can have on Accelerator Plus and what some of these new features might help you do. Now I know that many of you out there said that you were industrial distributors. So there are several ways you can choose to show this to your customers. We do have demos available if you'd like to talk about that. I'd love for you to give me a call or reach out via email. We also have Consolidator Plus posters, something very easy to just stuff in your portfolio and bring with you when you're going to see customers. It's got an actual size picture of the Consolidator Plus, and the back has all sorts of valuable information about the product. So it's a nice way to have a good lead behind on the Consolidator, show them what it really looks like, and start a conversation. Um, I always recommend that when you go and you show this, you start off talking about sumps. You know, it's a great opener. Oh, do you have sumps around here you'd like to see more information on, perhaps monitor for maintenance? Because everywhere has sumps. And so even if that's not where you land, and the conversation goes off in another direction once you show this to them, which you very well may. It's a nice way to get you in the door. Now, there's a few more questions. Uh, before I ask those, I've got one more for you. Before I answer those, I've got one more for you. Uh, would you like us to contact you or your office for additional training? Perhaps some of you manufacturing folks see this and think, wow, I could really use it in my plant. I've got an application I'd like to discuss. Maybe some of our distributors who are here think, wow, I'd really like to learn more about this, talk about the demo, get myself some posters. So if any of those things are true, do me a favor, click yes here, and we'll reach out and we'll talk to you. Now I'm going to answer a couple more questions. Uh, to do that, I'm going to jump back to my earlier slide. It's got my contact information on it, just so you can take that down if you'd like. Um, so let's see here. Give me one moment just to find my questions. So Tim has asked, is there a historian in this device? I think what you're asking is, can it do data logging? Uh, and the answer is, it, it does not do data logging, no. That it's not a chart recorder. Well, I should say not at the moment it's a chart recorder. I think before the end of the year, you'll see another release come out of this that may well include those features. But at the moment, it is not a chart recorder. It doesn't have data logging or sort of trend graphing capabilities. Uh, <clears throat> I also got a question from Robert asking about cost range for this. 
And so what you'll generally find is, uh, depending on your configuration, ranging from a, a unit that literally has no inputs or outputs that's just being used as a Modbus display, all the way up to a unit that could have uh, upwards of 28 inputs coming into it, uh, or some mix of inputs and outputs that, that fills up the capabilities of the product, you're talking uh, a price of anywhere from $2,500 to usually around $5,000. Uh, there's also a question that's come in, but what is the maximum number of inputs this can accept? And uh, that's an interesting question because the way the device is populated is that there are input and output cards that go into the back of it. In fact, I can show those to you in a moment. And what that means is that you are going to sort of, for every card you put in there, if it's an output, you're taking a spot that could potentially be an input, if that makes sense. And so, the answer to your question is that uh, you can have up to 28, 4 to 20 million inputs. You can have up to 25 10 amp Form C relays, but you're not going to get 28 inputs and 25 Form C relays. So we're going to build it up in such a way that it provides just what you need. Um, and why don't I just show that to you so it makes a little more sense. So let me get a screen share up here going again. All right, and so this is a picture off our website where you can go find more information about the PD9000 Consolidator Plus. And this is showing you the uh, inside of an enclosure we've got it installed in. And what I wanted to show you is that on the back of the unit, you have these slots. Let me use a better color. You've got these slots that hold I.O. cards. And so you can have up to those maximums. You just have to balance what you're going to be using for your inputs and outputs. Usually what we see is a mix. So Someone may, for example, fill three cards with 4 to 20 million inputs, which is going to get them 12 4 to 20 million inputs. And then they may use those other four slots for relays, which is going to get them 20 relays. You can get four inputs and five, or five outputs in a slot. And that's probably pretty confusing. Uh, the best way to do it is just talk to us or come to our website and configure yourself a unit. Uh, the last question we'll field here today, because uh, I do appreciate it, but you've been with me for quite some time here, uh, is can you add those input cards after purchase? Uh, and yes, you can absolutely do that. So thanks for asking that, Steve. You can add the inputs and the outputs after purchase. It's a very easy thing to do. You pop some screws off the back, just buy a card, and you put the back back on. Um, it was, it's been designed since the beginning to be able to do that. And that is something a lot of folks do. They, they buy a lower populated version of it with the intention of, well, as we as we do more work in this plant and we roll out more of the needs to connect to this, we'll deal with it when that time comes. They know a little bit more about what their requirements are going to be. So with that, I thank you very much for attending, folks. Uh, you've been a great audience. I appreciate all the questions. I am sorry that I did not get to all of them. Uh, if I did not get to your question, I will be sure to have someone follow up with you next week. My final request of you is this. There's a survey when you leave here. If you would just take one minute and fill that out, give us any ideas you have on what other presentations you'd like to see, I'd certainly appreciate that. I hope many of you get the chance to try this product. I think you're really going to like it. And even more so, I hope I get a chance to talk to you soon about it. Thank you very much. Hope to hear from you. And I hope the rest of you have a good day and a great weekend. Thanks.